take Apple's Mac Mini design from a few years back, smush it together with AMD's flagship CPU, sprinkle some unique features onto it, and that's the Mini's Forum AI X1 Pro in a nutshell. So how close is it to the Mac Mini design? Um, very close. It's just taller with a larger bottom section. The AI X1 Pro is a big, heavy plastic box and not the usual mini PC we're used to looking at. There have also been some other changes from the norm which will divide viewers as it did me. Inside the AI X1 Pro is AMD's Ryzen AI9 HX370 CPU, 12 cores, 24 threads and Radeon 890M graphics. That's the same CPU found in the Mini's Forum AI370 and also with a similarities end. A big change is that this Mini has an inbuilt power supply so it comes with just a power cord. Also included is a HDMI cable, spare M.2 thermal pad and heatsink, a monitor mount and vertical stand. The vertical stand is much higher quality than some previous ones from Mini's Forum and won't scratch up the Mini yet still holds it firmly in place. The front of it has a couple of USB 3 10 gigabit ports, USB 4, although this one did not support being powered by my USB-C monitor, audio jack and Windows Copilot button. On top of it is a fingerprint sensor for Windows Hello support. The right side has an SD card reader. Inside is a MediaTek Wi-Fi 7 chip for wireless and Bluetooth. The back has USB 2, Oculink, USB 4, which did allow the Mini to be powered by USB-C, DisplayPort, HDMI and dual Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN. Finally, a microphone and speaker is included. The AI X1 Pro works great with the Mini's Forum portable dual 1080p monitor and can be powered and display with just one USB-C cable. Opening up the Mini is not as easy as it should be. While there are four exposed screws, there's another one hidden under here you might miss first time around. The bottom casing uses plastic clips to latch onto the case. Always annoying to dislodge. After that, you've got a bunch of screws to remove from the cooling plate. Some I found to be screwed in too tightly during manufacturing. Watch out for the cables and finally we have access to the memory and storage. This is the first HX370 Mini to include three M.2 slots. Two of them are Gen 4 X4, while the third one is Gen 4 X1. Windows 11 Pro is bundled with a pre-build and a malware and rootkit scan came up clean. The latest Ubuntu was also tested off a USB drive and worked fine. Pricing of the unit wasn't up at the time of recording, but if available before I finish editing the video, I'll add it in. Moving on to the benchmarks. In single core Cinebench, the AI X1 Pro performs pretty much as expected around the 2000 mark. Multicore performance is excellent out of the box, but increasing the power limit in the BIOS has it performing like the best B-Link Sur 9 result. The AI X1 Pro takes the top spot in the Geekbench 6 single core benchmark and in multi-core as well. Very impressive. It's also the fastest in H.264 video encoding and AV1 software. The AV1 hardware video encoding task, which offloads it to the GPU, was better than the others. DDR5 Sodium has lower bandwidth than the solder memory found in the other HX370 minis, so it's no surprise to see it below the other mini PCs. It now falls into Radeon 780M territory in Firestrike. B-Link Sur 9 with LPDDR5X7500 is up by 17%. In DX12 TimeSpy it's up by 16%. And Steel Nomad tightens to a 9% improvement for the Sur 9. Unsurprisingly, the Geekbench AI CPU test has this one out in front for the minis tested so far and Mini's Forum are pushing this as a deep sea capable unit. While the AI X1 Pro is clearly the fastest HX370 Mini tested so far on the CPU side, it does drop down on the AI GPU benchmark, as it did with 3 d Mark. Okay, so how much does DDR5 Sodium RAM affect the AI X1 Pro in a gaming workload? Let's find out. CPU heavy esports titles first, and in Valorant there's a slight drop. Dota 2 also isn't heavily affected. Counter-Strike 2 gets hit harder by the slow memory, now a drop of 11%.
Not a big hit to League of Legends either. Now on to the GPU heavy titles. A larger drop of around 17% in Ghosts of Tsushima. For Cyberpunk, the DDR5 5600 Mini is behind by around 13%. Robocop Rogue City sees a 10% drop. Hellblade 2 is a smaller 8%. God of War Ragnarok, 10% again. Space Marine 2 is a memory bandwidth hungry title and gets hit hard. A massive 34% reduction in frame rate. Baldur's Gate 3 is barely affected, with just a 6% decrease. Even smaller in Indiana Jones, only a few percent. In emulation, there's no real change, whether it's SEMU or RCPS3. So there we have it, double digit drops in the majority of games, but really depends on how much memory bandwidth comes into play. Space Marine 2 is the main example, and you can bypass all that by using an Oculink eGPU. Here I'm using an RTX 4070 Super with my external eGPU dock to get as good an experience as you'll get with an external solution. Rebar is supported. Of course, you can also use USB 4 over Oculink, which isn't as good. Happy to report this Mini's for a Mini managed to pass the audio latency test with Cinebench running in the background. First one in a while, and likely because it doesn't thermal throttle. Video editing at 4K is no problem with HX370, although the CPU can still spike to 100%. AMD's media engine isn't as efficient as Intel's QuickSync. Not much to say about the inbuilt speaker, it's similar to sound quality like every Mini or laptop. Lacks space, but does an okay job. And this is the audio quality of the microphone if you plan to use it. 3 d Mark storage benchmark shows a below average Kingston Gen 4 NVMe drive included, performing much like a Gen 3. The drive maxed out at 55C after the thrash test, which is fine. Mini's Forum's AI X1 Pro has one of the better Bluetooth results around. Also, happy to report, no issues with Wi-Fi at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. An idle power draw of 10 watts is average, but is higher than a couple other HX370 minis we've looked at. Maximum power draw is around what the other minis with the same CPU recorded. The AI X1 Pro does well with cooling and keeps the CPU from thermal throttling in both power modes. Fan noise is also on the lower side, not too far off the Beelink Sur 9, which is still the quietest HX370 Mini tested. As we've gone over in the intro, the AI X1 Pro isn't small. 
In fact, it's the second biggest one tested for volume. Pressing the delete key on startup will get you into the BIOS. In advanced ACPI setting, you'll find a few options including the power limit setting. You can also set how much VRAM to allocate to the integrated graphics in AMD CBS. Find the power loss option and set the maximum power limit manually. Okay, so let's go over the pros and cons. Mini's Forum's AIX1 Pro has the best CPU performance of any tested so far. Cooling is good all around. No Wi-Fi or Bluetooth issues with this one. There's plenty of great features like Oculink, Wi-Fi 7 and 3M.2 SSD slots. There are some features you'll either love or hate, like the inbuilt power supply and DDR5 sodium slots which allow you to replace or upgrade your memory. But the integrated graphics clearly takes a hit to performance, which ranges from low single digit to double digit percentage drops. All the new additions make for a much larger mini PC. Also, it should be easier to open than it is. Overall, a much improved mini PC release over Mini's Forum's previous AI 370. It'll come down to whether you need most of the features on offer and the price, of course. Find it linked in the video description below if you're interested and those wanting a gaming focused device should check out the Adamant G7PT which provides much more graphics performance than AMD's Radeon 890M graphics. You can find that video right here. Cheers!